Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Silver in here. Hope you're well. On uh, the eve, the post wedding of Harry and Meghan. Hey, good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, hi, Silburn here. Just want to wish you a wonderful evening. Um, it's uh, 19th of the 5th, Saturday evening. It's been a very beautiful, lovely, uh, nice sunshine. Um, the UK has been really um, awesome today, really. I mean, worldwide attention has been on the United Kingdom because of the wedding with uh, Prince Harry and of course his the Duchess of Sussex the Duchess of Sussex and the Duke of Duchess Prince Harry congratulations to them um, I think that's one of the, the top things which is going on now and uh, just doing some little housekeeping here as normal hey Mark how are you doing Mark, do you know Philip Masco? There's this guy in the UK. There's a guy in um, in, in Canada. He's a he's a Jamaican that um, make wonders happen. And uh, one day I will have to, I'll have to get him on as well. You know, let me hear if you can hear me clearly, as much as possible. Um, you know, I was I was looking at the news today and I realized. Golly gee, there's nothing in the news. Well, everything is in the news actually, but nothing in the news whereby of any, everything has been completely overridden by the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Merkel, you know? And it was a splashing and it was a, a lovely wedding. I mean, I, 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 I absorbed it, you know? Uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if I should say I'm a royalist or whatever like that, you know? I'm not a Republican, you know? And, uh, and many people love it, you know. A few highlights that I got from it, and one of the highlights was um, the mother. The mother alone. Um, it seemed not to be any, any family members or whatever like that. But also, what was also striking was the natural nature of Megan. Normally when somebody has a wedding, they have completely absorbed themselves with lots of makeup lots of um, diamond golds and pearls and everything like that now nah, it was just simply megan right and i believe as well that she's gonna put her seal and her stamp upon who she is because when one sees the when one sees the the the, the diverse nature of the the different items it couldn't have it could have only been by some way how Meghan and Harry put their seal in it. And, and one of the things also is that, what I recognize as well, there are no leading politicians. No Obama, no Trump, no Tony Blair, no David Cameron, no Theresa May, no colorful flamboyant politics. I believe they just wanted to keep it for themselves. And there's only one prominent politician which I saw and it was the former Prime Minister of the UK John Major. John Major tend to be not a, a very uh, divisive factor. factor. If it was David Cameron one would say the Brexit factor which is a divisive factor a divisive force. If it is Tony Blair one would say it was a, a divisive factor because of the war with Iraq. If it was um, the present Cam um, what should I say Mr. Corbyn, 
Nah, he wouldn't be there because more than like everybody says a Republican. Uh, if it was up to him, we'd off with their head. Sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, I don't think he's a person who is fascinated so much by the royals, you know. And one of the things that you can see is that the UK um, love the royals. They love the royal family. The Americans as well. They love the Ameri- They love the family. Um, I've got a cousin. Uh, she just follows the royals everywhere they go as much as possible based on what we can see and uh so it's a very interesting time there and uh, i wish them all the best i wish them a good life and uh you know let there be love the power of love i mean the preacher man he preach fire no brimstone he preach prior fire prior fire no hell you know but he was just like a, a pentecostal pastor whereby one of the things that i recognize is that uh, prince philip did not fall asleep right prince charles did not fall asleep and so therefore he kept them awake you know i would love to see the song singing this took a light of mine you know at the end and all those sort of things so that was great that was fantastic ladies and gentlemen you know and uh but tonight tonight is going to be a, a, a different night i call it tonight all night um whereby on saturdays i will get some sort of link from someone from the UK, someone from Jamaica, someone from somewhere in the parts of the world whereby they can come on and we can talk about different things. Um, talk about uh, Trump, talking about um, Brexit. And for tonight, I have Mr. Mark Cameron, Renaissance. I, I was wondering about the Renaissance thing, if the Renaissance thing is, is a name which the parents gave to you or you you incorporated that name for yourself mark good evening how are you sir <laughs> good evening um, to answer that question uh, many years ago when i was in california i had a restaurant called the caribbean grill yes and this interviewer from fox news came in and um he saw the different things that i did uh, yes. from jerk making my jerk sauce to uh, being a being a chef and he said, you're like a renaissance man, you know, and it kind of stuck. Yeah. Yes. So that's where it came from. See, so you, you, you just, so, so Fox gave you that name. <laughs> yes, like, actually a reporter from Fox, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I say that because of the, the, the connotations and the link with Fox and things like that. You know, he's like, oh, you're a, you're a Trump man or something like that. You know? <laughs> but no, I mean, you know, you know, you know, the media recognizes, um, you know, content. Yes. I guess they thought that they thought that my story, based on what I was doing, I was doing an event called the Taste of Oceanside. Yes. Where yes. I brought together different restaurants to have this event, and they came to interview me to ask me how I came up with the idea, and when they saw the different things that I did, um, they decided to uh, interview me. Yes, uh, yes, for yes. about about a half an hour on the on the on the program. So, so that that's good. So listen. Place. So so what what did you think? Um, what do you think about the wedding today? I know we we briefly spoke about it earlier today. What do you think about the wedding? Did, were you? You see, I, I've got my colors, and I'm 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 sort of in my, and I've got to keep the the the, the, the UK spirit at this moment. Then, you know? <laughs> what do you think about the wedding today? Well, the wedding spoke a universal language of love. Um, yeah. Most, most of my friends, uh, most of my, you know, uh, friends and neighbors, they were struck by the, you know, the, the, the connection between the two. Yes. And I think everyone, everyone wants to be in love. Yes. You know? And it's that fairy tale idea of what happens when you know you get married, and of course it's 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 a little different than what you know it than how it's promoted. Um, yes. The day to day, the day to day of being married is that uh, is, is a lot different than what you. you <laughs> it's not the fairy tale that you see. Of course, yes. you you do have great times being married, uh, just as any other time, you know. So. I think people are just, they're in love with that mystery, that, that um, you know, the whole idea of love. Yes, 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 yes. Well, and, um, and what do you think about the, the American preacher? I don't know if you saw, the, but I see his name is Mr. Curry. 
he spiced up the whole thing and he's 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 creating going viral, you know. <laughs> well, with a name with a name like Curry, I mean that's spice right there, you know. I mean, I mean, he's certainly lighting it up. He certainly made an impression on that, um, you know, on that in that church. I'm sure yeah. they've never heard that level of intensity before. Yeah, or, and, and persons going like that. <laughs> Then again, but, then again, you know, it, it, it might be a, a new leaf, you know, it might be a new chapter in the in the in the royalty. Yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, I, I, I think I think it is royalty meeting royalty. You know, one of the things with black people is that uh, we're from kings and queens, and uh, and all that is part of the connotation. So therefore, it is it is like what Donisha Prendergast said: white privilege meet black privilege. You know, come against black privilege. You know. Royalties are all connecting, uh, depending on how one look at it and how one spin it, you know, um, you know, Mr. Cameron. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, I've got Mark Cameron here tonight. And uh, on Saturdays, what I want to do is to look at some connections with overseas, uh, Jamaica, UK, whatever. Um, not, not UK, uh, you know, but looking at some of the different issues. And Mark Cameron... Um, is from Jamaica, um, interest in nature, environment, influences earlier landscape and seascaping paintings, um, the early interest. Mark migrated to tertiary education in New York where he majored in graphic design that fostered his interest into abstract and impressionism, which ultimately contributed to his versatility, versatility, versatility. Mark also studied under American master Pamela Sarkozynian, California for two years while being the curator and chairman of the largest art fair called the Oceanside Days of Art. He has shown recently at the recently at the Urban League National Conference, Kramer Art Colleague Gallery Studio at Art Basel 2017. Um, and uh, and recently uh, recently presented a portrait to the NASA Catherine Johnson from the iconic movie Hidden Figures and Juliet Honest MP and wife of the Prime Minister of Jamaica known as the Renaissance Man. Mark is also a chef. You didn't tell me that. I got to do a different show with you now that you're a chef, you know? <laughs> Done demonstrating cooking on Fox, NBC, and CBS and simulates not only your mind with his art, but your palate as well. Mark currently works out as a student in Plantation Acres, Florida, where he's becoming prof prolific in producing abstract, representational, and impressionistic art. Welcome, Mark. Now, good to be here. Mark, I had a guest the other night, and we were talking about um, <clears throat> technology taking over jobs. And what came out of that discussion were that there are certain jobs which technology won't be able to take over. And we talk about art. And, that's, and, and when you mentioned the art bit there, and I saw your exhibition, I said, I need to speak to Mark. Mark, will technology take over your artistic nature? <laughs> It will, it will impact those who are not current in terms of, you know, computer graphics or, you know, computers. Uh, but it won't take away the, you have to, to be an artist, you have to, you have to think things through. You have to, um, the, the creativity is yeah. not something that you can, can take away from, uh, from someone. Yeah. Uh, technology can enhance can help me to do my work a lot quicker. Yes. But it won't take away it, it won't take away the imagination that I have or the creativity that I have. So no. Right. It cannot, it cannot, it cannot um, no. At so, the end of the day, at the end of the day, we are the ones that create. So the computer is just another tool as, as uh, you know, um, in terms of creating more different products. Different products. So, so therefore, what you're saying is that the, the mind and the creative nature is, is a driving force, but with technology, one can use that to sort of enhance what is already enhance. there. Enhance, absolutely. Right. Um, you know, many years ago when I started um, silkscreen printing, Yeah. We would make, um, you know, for every color printed on a T-shirt or a banner or what have you, you'd have to make a screen. Yes. And the process in, in, in doing the color separations, all that kind of stuff, 
No, you have um, you have plotters or printers that makes you know silkscreen printing almost um, obsolete. Yeah. So yes. um, if you're not current with the with the with the technology, then you're going to be left behind. Right, right. So it is innovate or die, <laughs> something like that. Absolutely, absolutely. You have to, you know, and it, it, it goes across the board with everything else. I mean, you have to yeah. look on market trends. If you're in the business of buying and selling or, or, or you know, if you are a, a, a vendor, you have to look on where things are going. So you have to be on your, 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 your toes in terms of, um, yeah. of looking where things are going. Um, Anticipating changes, you know, you yeah. might buy um, technology that, that, that is going to be changed next next year, next year, and you're stuck yeah. with a million dollar, um, you know, um, product that that has been replaced by something else. So you have to be on the alert. Yes, yes, yes. What 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 do you call? I, 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 somebody just made a comment, Carleen McFadden said your pieces are pleasing, but she used a word like uh, aesthet aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> okay. You know, what, 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 well, what, would, what, what makes her say that, that your pieces, the work that you're doing is that pleasing? What is the unique nature about what you do and what drives you? What is that? What is your USP in your artistic work? I think most of my work, first of all, I started doing landscapes uh, when I moved to America. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I tried to capture was my experience in Jamaica that were the best times that I had in Jamaica. Yeah. So my pieces were landscapes, um, scenes of Jamaica that, that were comforting to me. Yeah. So I would, I would imagine that um, what's comforting, comforting to me Maybe confident to other people as well, you yes. know. I try, I try to, I try to send a message through the beauty of art. Yes. Now, to be clear on this, I mean, I'm not. You can get a message to people with beautiful art, and a message you may not like the message. Mm. So you can use art, just as you would music to get your, 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 um, get the attention of people um, by, by pulling them in. Right. You pull them in with the, the, the quality of your artwork and, and, your, and how pleasing your work is to the eye. Yeah. Now, I find myself, I find myself doing more impact. Somebody's trying. Somebody's trying. While I'm on the <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes, you know, you, yeah, sometimes you, um, I find myself, I did a piece the other, the other day of Bob Marley and um, Michael Manley. Yes. And it's called, it's called A Conversation Beyond the Grave. Yes. Now, what struck the person who bought it was how realistic Bob looked and that person's love of Ma Michael Manley. Yes. But behind them, you had Jamaica burning. Mm. You had Jamaica burning behind Mar Marley and Manley. So, you know, you buy the piece and you like the Bob Marley, you saw Bob Marley and saw Manley, you're like, wow, that's a nice painting, you know, Bob and, Mar and Marley. I mean, yes. Marley and, and, and Manley. But if you look a little deeper into the painting, you will, you will see the builders behind them burning. And I'm trying to do more paintings that foster some conversation, impactful pieces that get people talking about, about current events that we're all affected by. And um, so I find myself doing more of that, more, more activism, so to speak. Yes. You know, it, it's hard to be an artist and not be an, um, an activist because it, there's it, so it, much things yeah. around. There's so many things around that you see. Yeah. That it, you, it, um, that... go ahead. Yeah, 
Is it similar to uh, an artist, which is a musician as well? Um, a musician normally sometimes, or a, a DJ, they normally say that they reflect what the system is or what the society is. You mentioned that an, as an artist, you try to create a conversation. But does an artist as well reflect what is the now? You mentioned Michael Manley and Bob Marley. And when you mentioned that, I was waiting to hear the word Siaga because I was thinking about the peace concert for argument's sake. And I, and I was saying to myself, and then you mentioned um, Jamaica burning or, or the buildings burning. Of course, we're talking to Jamaica. But, but, but is the building burning with Michael Manley and, uh, and, and Marley? So, I, so if I'm, if I'm going to look at that, I'm going to ask some questions. But that's maybe what you're evoking. <laughs> Controversy as well. <laughs> well, there are a couple of questions that have been asked about that piece. And um, yes. like I said, the title was A Conversation Beyond the Grave. Yes. So these, both of these persons have already passed on. Yes. And they're, they're actually reflecting on the situation in Jamaica as we speak. Right. Michael Manley, the, the portrait was, Michael Manley was like this, like, like what the hell is going on, you know? Yeah. And Marley was about to light a spliff. Yes. Excuse so me. Ma excuse Marley me. Was, excuse me while I like my spliff, yeah? <laughs> right. So, so, so Manley was asking, like, Marley, like, what, what the hell is going on in Jamaica? Yes. And he was like, why a long time I tell a man them that, you know, <laughs> kind of thing, you know, which is, which <laughs> was what I was trying to get across that he's been talking about it for a very long time. He's been singing about it for a very long time, mm. but to Manly, he couldn't understand it. He couldn't understand why Jamaica is the way it is, but Marley could because he has been singing about it for a very long time. He's been singing about revolution. He's been singing about the injustices that are going on in the world, in Jamaica. So it was no surprise to him. So he had time to light his spliff while Manny was like, what is going on? Yes, yes. I see where, I see where, I see where you're coming from. So, so what you're saying right there is you are stimulating that after effect. And you, you pointed out the distinction there was beyond the grave. So therefore, Siaga could not be in that picture there. So therefore, they are beyond the grave now, having this discussion and say, what one, what happened there, you know? So therefore, so therefore, when Siaga passed away, you may have to incorporate the third person coming through, if anything, not that you want Siaga to pass away, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, you know, I, it's kind of funny. I like to paint people that I kind of like. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, no disrespect to Mr. Thiago. Um, people need to read. Mm. People need to read and to study their history. Yes. Um, Manly had his challenges, and um, I'm sure Thiago did as well. But I'm not going to tell everybody what they should read or what they shouldn't read if it's not important to you yes if it's important if it's important to you then you ought to study and read into your history so you yes. know the mistakes of the past so you do not repeat them yes um manly had some challenges um from outside forces. Um, I left Jamaica in 79, as most Jamaicans did. Most Jamaicans left in about the earliest, you know, when the 70s. Yeah. Seven flights a and week, you know, or seven flights right, a day, or know. something like that, yeah. Yeah, that was a level of arrogance from Mr. Manley. Yeah. Who believed, so much, who was so passionate about what he wanted for Jamaica. He wanted, he believed, as, as I do, that Jamaica should be self-reliant. Yes. There's nothing wrong with self-reliance. Self-reliance is not the best word 
for someone trying to sell you something. Mm. If people are trying to sell you something and they will make a profit from their sale to you, they don't want to hear that you're you're making your own things and you're gonna you know, you're gonna you're gonna plant your own your own food and people don't want to hear that kind of stuff. Yeah. So Manley's agenda was demonized by the opposition yes. for the sole purpose of gaining power. Power. Yeah. It's almost like it's almost like um, you know that biblical story about the um, about the two ladies that um, had a had a baby. It's King they Solomon, claimed the yeah. two babies. Right. Yes, and the ba- the the mother, the the so called mother, who claimed that child said yes. Let's cut the baby in half. The mother that said cut the baby in half reminded me of the JLP. Mm. In other words, they were so concerned about getting in power that they would sacrifice Jamaica. Mm. And that is one thing that a lot of people have not thought about or took the time to investigate. All they were concerned about is man they're talking about uh, five flights a day. Well, yeah. guess what? Most of the people who were the fair mongers, so to speak, who talked, who talked about us going communists, they all stayed. Yes. They stayed and they bought up all the property that Jamaicans left and sold at pennies on the dollar. Right. They profited. They're now billionaires. Yes. Because yes. of the Jamaicans who left. Um, based on based on a fraction of the truth, but mostly lies. Yeah. And there's a phenomenon that affects that, that, that where if you marry a little bit of a lie with the, with the truth, for some reason, the lie gets more attention. Yeah. For and some the reason, the lie gets more attention. So... There's a lot of blame to go around. There were outside forces that there was a political game going on between Russia, the Soviet Union, and the and America. Yeah. And Manley tried to play. Um, he tried to play both sides. I would say he flirted, but then again, what is democratic socialism? A democracy means you have the option of voting that person out, yes. which is exactly what we did. We voted them out. Mm. So, you know, democratic socialism is like what they have in Canada. It's like what yeah. they have in your country, the, um, the, the UK. Mm. Jamaica wanted to subsidize more things, wanted to subsidize our, our, um, subsidize our school and our... Um, our our medical areas, you know, yeah. um, the hospital, yeah. which is done all uh, in most countries. So, so, you know, that is socialism. So as, as but, someone, as Carly, as Carly McFadden said that Manley's socialism was greatly, greatly misunderstood for communism. And, and that, I guess that was because of the flirtation with Cuba, Russia, and, and that sort of linkage there. Is that a right way of saying that? Well, you have to understand the Jamaican people. Mm. Um, first of all, we are a people from the Maroons. We, Jamaicans could never go communist. If you understood how Jamaicans are, that idea of Jamaica going communist would not even be in your head. 
the people that left Jamaica did not understand Jamaica. Mark you, um, there were some challenges. There were some very difficult times because of the, the East-West conflict. And Jamaica was caught in the middle of that. And there were yes. some diabolical things that went down on both sides. It, it, was not, it was not happy days are here again. Jamaica yes. had some serious challenges. But it was made worse by the, by the propaganda machine that wanted money out of office. Now, now if, we, if, we, if we switch this around now, and you're painting what you say evoke conversation, you're painting somewhat um, reflect situations, do you normally give an explanation for your painting or you allow people to somewhat interpret it in their own way so it's somewhat loose-ended? Usually people that look at my art they ask questions. I allow them their space to kind of look on what's going on. And then, you know, I, they usually ask me what I meant by, by doing this. So I end up telling them anyway. Yes. But I usually stand back and watch them for a while and, you know, see what happens. I think somebody had a question here. Man, this was greatly. Okay. Miss, okay. Yeah. I think you mentioned already. Yeah. Yeah. So people usually ask me what, what I meant by it. And I usually tell them because I mean, at the end of the day, my painting, I paint with a message. Yes. Um, it's not only for comfort. I might paint a nice landscape yes. or I might paint, a, I might paint a, for instance, there's a bolt behind me. I'm going to show it to you. Yeah. It was inspired by bolt taking the world by storm. Right. Right. So, here it is. This is a tidal wave of Bolt riding the tidal wave. Okay. So he's okay. on the mark, gets cut, and there's a big tidal wave behind him. Mm. So in most cases, my, my pieces have a message. Right. Do you know why I asked that question? I asked that question because there's this new song which is out by Childish Gambino, Gambino uh, This Is America, by Donald Glover. You've seen that video. Tell me you've seen it. By no, I haven't seen it, but I like, I like Danny Glover. D Donald Glover. Donald Glover. And, and whereby it, it's so, it's so This Is America. And uh, he started off this, the song and then he shot this guy in his head and then he shot the choir or so uh it is like you're enjoying yourself and then bam this is america because it's like a shock treatment to say you can enjoy yourself have a good time okay we can have the queen we can have the royal family we can have the lovely wedding we can have the mother we can uh make is black but guess what when you leave there racism still exists nothing has really changed you know the point i'm saying this now Donald Glover was interviewed and he chose not to give his interpretation or his reasons. Why? Or the message behind it. And as someone says, Karen McFadden Mac said, every individual in interprets art differently. So it is like, I interpret it different ways and I've listened to other people's views, listen to person's interpretation would have a slight difference. And I found that very powerful because I, I interpret it simple like this. It's fake. <laughs> Many things are fake, you know, just like with a bar, a bummer. No, I'm not saying a bummer is fake. Let me just clarify right there. But really and truly with the advent of a bark, a bummer, everybody was excited. Everybody. Yeah. Wow. We've arrived. Everything is lovely. Then bam, Trump came. Wow. Everything is not lovely. Now the question to be asked is this, the day after Trump, became president did he change america when Barack obama was there was america changed so which is the truth what's the reality was one a smoke screen was Barack obama a smoke screen and is chump reflecting the reality okay let's be clear about america 
yes. America does not change with presidents. Mm. Obama got a peace, a peace prize, the Nobel yeah. Peace Prize, before he became, before, when he just started the presidency. Yeah, nothing really happened yet, yes. Because he advocated peace. Yes. He advocated peace, and he was elected based on his pushing for peace. Yes. When he got in power, did anything change? He went into he went into Syria. He overthrew Gaddafi. Yeah. Um, nothing has changed. Donald Trump said the same thing. Donald Trump said that we sh we have no business in Syria. We have no business fighting this war. This work in America. Yeah. So every. Every four years, Americans are tricked. Nothing has changed. The only president that I have come to respect a lot is Jimmy Carter. Mm. Jimmy Carter is a decent human being. And he tried the best that he could against the machine, and they demonized him and got rid of him. Mm. But he's a decent person. He is the epitome of a true Christian. Um, to be a Christian, you have to be Christ-like. Yes. Now, ask yourself this question. Is Obama Christ-like? Is Trump Christ-like? Look on, look on Jimmy Carter. Is Jimmy Carter Christ-like? And you'll have your answers. So, in a weird way, when a, a president professes Christianity and does the opposite globally, mm. Christianity takes a beating. They're going to say, okay, if this person's a Christian, this is the way he behaves, then I don't want to be a Christian. Yeah. So, carrying, carrying that badge so to speak, um, you know, um, of a Christian on your chest. Yeah. By, by a leader who is not a Christian, does Christianity a disservice? So to answer your question, there has been no change in American policy between Trump and Barack Obama. Barack Obama was a decent person. I give yeah. him that. He carried himself well. There, there's no, there, there's not, no, um, no, no skeletons come out of the closets. He was like and a big hostile. He was the hostile, isn't it? He was a hostile. He was what we as Americans or black people look for in a leader. Mm. And he exemplified that, you know, that, um, that, that behavior. Yeah, yeah. But. The, re the reality is that he never went to Chicago when people are getting shot every, every couple of days in Chicago. Mm. He didn't. He never went to Chicago. A lot of black people are still, you know, shaking their heads like, what exactly changed? Nothing actually yeah. changed. Yeah. The more they change, the more they remain. I think the best thing that Barack did was to let a little black boy out of Detroit know that, hey, it's possible that if you carry yourself well, you're articulate and you study, you can be president. Right. And I, I'd say, I would say a lot of Americans, I believe that the everyday American is just like every other person in the world. It's a few that carry the narrative about, about America and even Jamaica. Mm -hmm. It's a few bad apples that give Americans a bad name and give Jamaicans a bad name. Mm -hmm. most, most Jamaicans and Americans are hardworking people who are just trying to survive, man. They're trying to take care of their families. Mm -hmm. 
trying to you know trying to make sure that they they their kids have good schools and to be safe. Yes, yes, yes. The regular people, the regular people are not are getting are getting a, a bad name. Yes, for the, yes. For the very few, for the very few, yeah. and it's sad. And I mean, the system in place does not allow the best to lead. It does not allow the best to lead. If you look on Jamaica, mm. let me tell you something. Jamaica, we have some of the most innovative, talented people you could ever imagine. Mm. And let's think about our leadership. Do we have people that have Jamaica, Jamaica's mm -hmm. interest at heart? Do we, do we have people like that? I, I, I think Mark I, I, would, I, I would challenge anyone yes. to that. I do not believe the leaders we've had have our best interest. I think their 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 interest is 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 comes from elsewhere but the majority of Jamaicans. Okay. Uh, when you mention when you mention the leaders, are you talking about from uh both sides, PNP, JLP, NDM? Double PJ, whatever. PMP, PMP, listen, PMP and GLP. First yeah. of all, we have an opportunity to have a conversation between both political parties. Yes. And not politicize things that are important to the country. Are we having those conversations? We're not. All we're concerned about is how to get in power to manage our resources. That's it. If Jamaica had nothing, I would I'd bet any money that nobody be running going going um be running for election. They wouldn't be yes. going, they, they wouldn't go into politics because there, there's no money. Once mm -hmm. there's money, you're gonna have people that are gonna be running for office because it gives them a chance to manage our resources. And that is power. Power gives you that opportunity. Um, wow. We're not having a conversation that is going to make a difference in our country. Yes. We're not talking about teenage pregnancy. We're not talking about, um, about crime, the root cause of crime. We're not talking about that. We have taken a band-aid approach to crime where, you know, you get cut and mm -hmm. then you come with a solution to deal with a cut, but not the solution to prevent you getting cut. And that is not, that is a, that is a conversation that we're not having among our people. Okay. So what you're saying then, I'm Mark, talking. is that, what, what you're saying then, Mark, is that from your perspective and from your um knowledge you're of the view that the, the present crop of political leaders in jamaica mps whatever you're saying they do not have the interests of jamaica at heart at present that is my that that is my belief because um i don't think they're doing what's necessary to change anything yeah and if you're not, if you're, if you're, if you're not doing anything to ch to make a change, then, okay, for for instance, right, there was a new initiative that came forward called NEDS, where people are are to be to be identified, a new method of identifying people. I'm glad you mentioned that. It's good that you start. Yeah, keep talking. Yes. Uh, is that a priority? Is that a priority? Hmm. Why are we spending billions of dollars to identify persons when there's no jobs? There's no jobs. So who but cares if you're identified or not? Who cares? They were, saying, they were saying it's about crime, isn't it? You know something? <laughs> if, you want to start, if you want to start a war, mention terrorism. Yes. If you want to get an unjust or an un a, a bill that is not necessary put in place. Mention jobs. Mm. Jobs and terrorism will get ordinary people
to do things they're not interested in doing. Yes. You mentioned terrorism, you give away your rights. You give away your civil rights, okay? You mentioned jobs, you give up your environment. People allow you to decimate a forest under the guise of, of getting a job. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Yes. So it's, it's a boogeyman. It's a boogeyman to get, to get people to do things that are, are, are not good for them. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's, that's, that's interesting uh, that you're giving that perspective there. Um, um, when, when I heard you spoke earlier um, and you mentioned about that the, you don't paint person that you don't like, um, and of course you painted Michael Manley, you painted uh, Bob Marley, one sort of believe of the view that you lean to a particular political affiliation mm -hmm. with Jamaica. Um, but at the same time, you're painted Miss Holness. Am I correct? Miss Holness was, um, okay, first of all, she is like the, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, mention about this as well, where there's a, there's some kind of a, uh, she's almost like a, um, like a Michelle Obama. I've heard that. I've heard that. Mm. Um, I was asked to do that, um, that, um, a painting yeah. uh, for her visit, for her visit to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. And, you know, most of these politicians, some of them are, most of them, most of them are good people, but they're misguided. Mm. They're misguided. Um, I think, and I'll retract somewhat, I'll retract somewhat what I said about them not caring about Jamaica. Yeah. I think they, they do, but they don't have a clue. They don't. So their heart is in the right place to a certain extent. Their heart is in the right place, but they don't have the passion or, or the ideas necessary to change, to make a difference in Jamaica. That's what I believe. Um, so, so what would you say then is the ingredient? Because you mentioned NIDS, which is something which came out recently and uh, it, it's somewhat, I haven't heard much about it. And I didn't see a sort of coming together of the leadership in Jamaica on both sides to sort of push this thing through. Um, there's also this uh, project, which is called Vision 2030. And I've always questioned every time there's an election, you don't really need any policies. You just need to set out Vision 2030. And Vision 2030, and which was supposed to be... Huh? <laughs> What's that? A new vision. A new vision. A new vision always comes up. You know what I'm saying? And I thought Vision 2030 was the key umbrella thing which was link between the two parties and it was across the board. So I always question about this Vision 2030 when they have elections, it doesn't reflect in the manifestos that like they're going different different routes. I, I, will, I, will, I will give you an example. Yeah. Have you heard about Tektron? Uh, they, put it, they put in gasoline. I'm not sure. I think so. Tetron. It rings, it rings a bell. Uh, okay. Tektron is something that they put into one of the, one of the, one of the um, I think it's mobile. Mobile oil. Mobile. M-O-B-I-L. Yes. Right. It's a, it's a gas station here in the, in the United States. Um, it has something, or it could be Chevron. It's called Tektron. Tektron, whatever you call it. Yeah. Now, when they when they put their ad on television, they said, "Hey, we have Tektron in in our you know in our um in our gasoline." Yes. We don't know what the hell Tektron is. We've been led to believe that it is going to help our car run much better. Chevron. So guess what? Well, it's calling someone yeah, they... say Chevron. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Chevron. Okay. So now Shell came up with um something called B one thousand. We got yes. the B1000. You have to get the B1000 or your car won't run right. Mm. So 
this is all this is all games that these guys play, okay? I don't need to know this Tetron. Give me the best gas and leave me alone, okay? Yeah. Now, it's the same, it's the same strategy that the politicians use. Vision 2020, vision 3030, vision 4040. Mm -hmm. It's all the same thing, man. <laughs> I'm still trying to find a vision. Because vision doesn't change anything. Well, they, they, we've been asked. We've been asked every couple of years to vote for a different party. How long have we been voting? And nothing has changed. Mm. Mm. Nothing has changed. So well, where's my, all my, this vision going? Well, my, my saying all the while is that um, if you listen this morning and uh, you listen to the, the national anthem, and it says, well, let's sing the national anthem now, the Queen. And the queen, actually, I watched her. She didn't sing because it was sung to her, you know, <laughs> the queen. But what, what I'm talking about right there now is that um, when, when, when I saw what happened, like, in the UK today, and, and you, you sing to the queen right, right there, it's like with Jamaica now, um, where is that level of allegiance, you know? Where is, where is the allegiance of Jamaica? Where is it going? Where is it centered in? To a, to a certain extent, one one can one can say, okay, with the UK, you know, you know where that umbrella link, where is it, where is the linkage go? But where does it go in Jamaica? Because it seems like it's going on two parallel, um, two separate uh, pathways at the same time. Jamaica needs a nonpartisan democracy. Mm. Jamaica does not need sixty MPs at five hundred million dollars a year. We don't need that. Mm. Me, you, and another bridging can run Con on Middlesex and Surrey. There's not a whole bunch of stuff going on in Jamaica. Well, they want to. Well, they, well, they, well they want to. Uh, you want to create a new Ocheris and create a new downtown, isn't it? You have a vision for creating uh, a new downtown, a <laughs> new Ocheris. <laughs> I'm being facetious, of course. <laughs> well, let's put it this way: there is a lack of accountability in Jamaica. Mm. Parties, the, per, the MP for each area, they, de, they deflect the responsibility to the party. Yeah. If you have a nonpartisan democracy where anyone, anyone who wants to run for, say, Manchester, yes. a person might run for Manchester, that person becomes a parish manager. Yes. Everybody else goes home. The parish manager runs that parish. Yeah. Okay. He accepts responsibility for the failures and the success for that, for that parish. Yes. We don't need any opposition until it's time to have an election. Mm. We don't need any opposition. If we have, if we have, if they've not done a good job, persons will challenge that parish manager at the next election. We need to have unity. Mm. A person that runs for Manchester and he wins, he's res responsible for the entire parish of Manchester. There are no PMP areas. There are no GLP areas. It's all one Manchester being run by a parish manager. Mm. That's all we need. Jamaica has 60 MPs and over 240 councillors. For what? Millions of dollars spent for what? Can somebody tell me today? Am mm -hmm. I getting my money's worth? Am I getting my money's worth at $550 million a year in MPs, 60 MPs, when we only have 14 parishes now? You have 14 parishes, yes. you have 60 MPs, and 240 parish councillors. Wow. Give me a break. I mean, who, who, who signed up for that? Did you sign up for that? Did Jamaican sign up for that? It this is crazy, man. It was something which it's was crazy. handed down. It, 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 well, it you was know something? They have, it was handed down, but they have increased it. It's, yeah. now, it's, it's now almost like, um, like the, 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 the queen of England. It's almost like the queen and um, the, the, the parish councils and, the, and, the, uh, and the, 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 the MPs are the in crowd. It's us versus them. Mm. 
they're almost like a, a, this hierarchy now. We're, we're, they're the ones that run the country and every, everyone is sucking up to these guys to get a piece of the pie. And how, it, how, you know, how, how, how does it's he... Like, it's actually quite you, frustrating. Yeah, I know. I, I can sense that. How do you use your art then to sort of send that message through or, or create that conversation? I can see the, uh, the, the conversation from the grave. I can see that very clearly where Manley has his hand on his head and Bob Marley smoking the spliff, you know? But, but otherwise than that, how do you get that message through? Uh, what, what sort of platforms are you using? Have you got political ambition for Jamaica, for yourself in Jamaica as well? Well, um, it's funny that you mentioned that uh, about three years ago, mm. excuse me, I wrote a, I wrote a, um, I wrote a piece called If I Were Prime Minister. Yes, and it was out of it was out of frustration. Yes, I wrote about all the different things that I would do, and a gentleman by the name of um, of uh, Joseph Patterson. Yes, called me and said your ideas were very closely aligned to his ideas. Yeah, and he started a movement called the United Independent Congress. I went against the political, against the grain, so to speak, and I supported his campaign. I became a vice president of the organization. Yes. But I was voted out. <laughs> I, was, I was voted out because I wasn't active. I wasn't, you know, I'm not a political person, okay? I have yes. no interest in politics. Yes. But I want the best for my country. And Joseph Patterson, who was a president, is a very known, is a no nonsense guy. The guy's an accountant. Things must add up to, his, to as far as he's concerned. They have to add up. Which is why I supported him. I he he advocated something that I believe would change Jamaica. Yes. And he said to me, he said to me, one reason I supported him was that he said that if any of the two parties adopted his policy he would not be interested in running. Mm. That's the kind of guy, I, that's the kind of person I like. Yes, I like yes. someone who is not about going into politics because he, you know, he, for, for the fanfare or the spoils or whatever, but wants to make a difference. So it showed me that he really wasn't a power hungry person, but just wanted to change as I did. I'm not interested in running for, um, for uh, um, politics. I'm not, I don't have the stomach for it. I, the, the people that um, that surround these guys, I'm, I'm just. I do not want to be a part of a very dirty business. So you're not a you're it's not a, a hypocrite. hypocrite. You're simply not a hypocrite. That's what you're actually saying. I'm not. You're straight. I'm not. I, I just don't like. I don't like politics. I was well, forced well, into it because <laughs> I was forced into it because I want I want I want change. Yes, I support yes. any party. I, I told Mr. Yes. Patterson that if tomorrow morning. He changes from what he advocated. I'm out. I don't support party. I support Jamaica and I support what's best for Jamaica. If tomorrow morning the, the, PMP, the, the, the JLP adopts a policy that is in sync with what I believe, I will support them. Right, right. But truth be told, okay. but truth be, to, truth be told, the PMP needed to be taught a lesson. They needed to understand that we as Jamaicans were not going to take their, 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 their blatant corruption and the, the foolishness that they did. Mm. And I was only too happy that the JLP won. Only too happy that they won. And now? And the, you know? <laughs> There's a whole scene in Jamaica where you dash a black dog for monkey, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, Jamaicans don't have a choice. Well, listen, the uh, when I mentioned the Queen, when I mentioned the Queen earlier, the second part of it was that when Queen Elizabeth passed away, they are going to say, the Queen is dead, long live the King. Instantly. The King is, and they always say, when you vote out the government, what do you get, Mark? You get the government back. <laughs> you vote out the government, you get the government, you know. Um, Adrian Dawkins just said here, 
I think you need to teach the politicians in Jamaica honesty and conscience. Caroline McBride says, individuals who have no interest in politics always make great politicians. Uh, is, is that relating to Trump? Well, Trump is a person who is not into politics. Is he a great politician? I'm, shift, I'm moving over to the States now before we wrap up, just to get a, a quick sort of overview regarding, we, we, we touched on Jamaica and in, in America now, uh, I, can, I can widen it by saying the advent of Trump, the plight of the black community or the black, I won't say black man. Uh, you're right there in Florida. What's your take on the America of today? Has it changed or is it a reality? Or is it, this is America? The America that's, that is portrayed is not the America that I have seen. I mean, I'm in a place called Plantation. Now, Plantation is not a place where a lot of black people lived before. Mm. Mm. I could say that when I first came here, there was some apprehension about me. Um, as anyone would if someone different comes into your community. Yes. I think, I think most Americans and most Jamaicans, most, most people want, they want the same things. Yes. They want a clean environment. They would like to live in a safe home where yes. there's not a lot of derelict hanging around. I don't want to say, um, you know, a, um, a sofa in my front, front of my yard or, you know, the typical, you know, impression that the, the media yes. will push. You know, like I said to you before, most Americans are, are good people. Yes. But the persons who carry the narrative are controlled by diabolical forces that are not in sync with American values. Mm. Americans have been hijacked by the media and hijacked by persons who do not have America's best interests at heart. And Americans are the ones that are, that are victims of, 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 um, of terrorism, which they did not perpetrate on people. Most of us don't even know what is going on halfway around the world. Yes. But we're the ones that get blown up for policies that are dictated by, by forces that are not, who do not have America's interest at heart. Beyond that is the, the dilemma. In, that is Beyond the dilemma the, even in our own country. So that is Jamaicans do not. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I'll just quickly say that's like beyond the White House. So it's not like it is emanating from the White House. It is beyond the White House, influence on the White House, that is where the power is. Yes, I mean, I mean, all the policies that um, they, they preach about before they get elected, that is not what they focus on. Hmm. They focus on things that you never even heard about. I mean, NEDS, I didn't hear anything about, um, about uh, NEDS when, when wholeness is running for election. I never heard about it. I did hear about, I did hear about fixed election dates. Yes. I have not heard about fixed election dates since he went into power. What about point, fixed election dates? Mm. So it seems like there is an, another agenda out there that is, that is not in the interest of Jamaicans or Americans. So, 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 not, what, so, yeah. so what we're talking about then is like uh, someone mentioned marketing strategies. So therefore, the plan is actually to somewhat win. Agenda is to win. Say the right things, dot the I's, cross the T's, win. But really, this is the plan. So there's an undercurrent which is happening there. So then, Mark, if that's the case then, isn't it wise for persons who know better and is thinking along the line of wanting to make that change to go in the office then where these things are happening? And staying on the outside in the periphery and uh, trying to make that well, change. You know, you know, you know what, you know, one of the reasons why I, I, I'm truly grateful that your types of medium exist today is that the 
these these me, these me, big media houses yes eventually will be marginalized yes because they are spewing a whole bunch of lies and propaganda yes so there will become a time i'm i'm, I'm, I'm going to you can you can mark me on this one Yes. There will become a time, there is going to be a time when the popular media will be marginalized and people will get their news from sources like yours. Yes. Where we have to, we have to take responsibility for our own lives. Yeah. And if we are not getting the truth from mass media, then we have to abandon them. Yes. Leave them alone and let them spew the news to themselves. We have to we have to take charge of our own lives, and that is what is going to happen. Yep. Um, to effect to effect change, there's no point in me at this particular point in time waving a banner of freedom and liberation and barking at the moon. I'd be like a dog mm. barking at the moon. People are mm. gonna be wondering what the hell is this guy upset about? Well, mm. educa education, knowledge fosters activism yes the more you know the more you know is the more you realize the wrongs of the world and it's a burden for me it's a burden because when you know all these things that are wrong and you can't do anything about it it's a yes. burden Bridget. it's a yes. burden and i sometimes get carried away on social media um that is my platform as well, where I talk about the injustices against us mm -hmm. because of my knowledge about my knowledge about the world and knowledge about my country. And it really bothers me that um, people are so ignorant. Mm -hmm. the ignorance is, it, I tell you something, man. But then again, people are so busy trying to survive. You know, they rush to work, rush yes. home, take care of the kids, they go to bed. As an artist, I've made my bed where to a point where I could, you know, one of the reasons why I worked so hard early on in my life is that I wanted an opportunity to get to a point where I could not be held to any time frame. You know, I could sit yes. down and think for myself, paint. And as you know, when you paint, it's a lot of time. Yes, yes, you're yes. Always, you're always thinking, you're always thinking. And things just keep coming to you like, okay, this is why they did that. This is why they did this. Mm. It comes to you. But we're so busy. We're so busy getting caught up in an advertised life. Keeping up with the Joneses. You know? The microwave, buying the a microwave new car. mentality. Yeah. yeah, buying a new car every two, every two years. Yeah, you got to buy a new car. Mm. We're caught up into that. Not realizing that we have to work for that. So, the more you work, is the less time you have to think. And, the, and and therefore, you become part of this automated aerobic clone factor then, if anything, because, and then you'll, then you'll get the media, the mainstream, throwing out little snippets of things and you grab it and say, did you hear what this person said? You know, nobody think about it. And one of the things that I do, Mark, as well, what I, I try to do is navigate the maze of news because there's always a media frame there's a, a report recently that showed many different news channels in America were actually pushing a particular narrative and all of them were saying the same thing. Sub subconsciously, in a subliminal way, it gets into a psyche and you believe that because that's what you're hearing, hearing and hearing. I'll give, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a quick example, right? On the way to work, well, on the way to do some, some business many years ago, they said centrifuges were found, cylind um, these, these, these um, aluminum pipes were found in, um, in, in Saddam's, um, in, in Iraq. Yes. Some, some, uh, some aluminum tubes. I heard this on the way out. Come to find out it was not the truth. It was not the truth. It, it was, yeah. it was, but we, we heard that these could be used to make things for an atomic bomb. There mm. was no retraction by, by, the, by, the, uh, by the news media. Mm. None. So in our mind, he was on his way to building a nuclear uh, bomb. 
Yes. I read a study the other day that um, 30% of Americans still believed that Saddam had weapons of mass destruction. Yes. And our own, they used one of our own again. Colin mm. Powell legitimized the, 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 the Iraqi war. He made it possible. Yes. He went before the UN. He went before the UN. He sold it. And he told them that he sold it. And they use a man. Yeah. They use a man that was very respected among the around the world to do the dirty work of those forces behind the scene. Yes. It made absolutely no sense. The Iraqi war didn't make any sense. The Syrian incursion did, didn't, did not make any sense. Syria has Christians. Everybody living in peace in in Syria. There is an opposition. And that's the truth. There is an opposition, just like in America. There's an opposition. And, but when you Libya have outside well. forces, absolutely, there is always opposition. Gaddafi mm -hmm. was winning against the terrorism, the terrorists. And when they realized that he was winning, NATO came in and took him out. NATO came in and took him out. So yes. there is. How did, it, how did that benefit America? Now we have a Libya that's unstable, uh, but diabol diabolical forces, um, they, they exist when there's chaos. Yes. You get cheap oil. You get cheap oil. Where's all of Gaddafi's money? Mm. Where's Gaddafi billions of dollars uh, um, in, in gold bars? Where, where's it? Yes. Anybody thought about that? My Somewhere. friend, piracy exists. Piracy exists today. The people are different, but the game is the same. Nothing has changed. Everything, everything remains the same. Well, listen, Mr. Cameron, we, we, we could go on for, forever, but before we go, I want to ask you this question. We, we talked about Jamaica. We talked about um, the USA. Uh, we talked about the briefly about the marriage. What do you think about the UK and Brexit? <laughs> um, I think people, people are longing for self-determination mm. that they, they sometimes go overboard you know, to, 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 to have a voice. Yes. When, when, um, when OJ was, um, was released from, uh, was found not guilty. Yes. Most people knew he was guilty, mm. but it was a voice against the injustice, against the beating from Rod, by Rodney King. Yes. Rodney Send King got beaten Actually, he got, he got beat up and they decided to have their voices heard mm. by not convicting uh, O.J. Simpson when, in fact, he was guilty. Yes. So, but before I go, you know, one shameless plug. Yes. <laughs> my, my art show is going on at the Art Institute of Fort yes. Lauderdale. It will conclude on the 12th of June. It's there every day from 8 to 5. That's on 17th Street in Fort Lauderdale. Yes. At the Art Institute in the Mark Wheeler Gallery. I have abstract, impressionistic pieces, and representational pieces available for viewing. And, and, and tell me, um, we're going to put that link up on, on the, under the thread. You can do that for me as well, underneath the thread. Okay. As well. Okay. And, and secondly, secondly, if, if persons want to, <clears throat> you see that that painting which you had at Usain Bolt, um, I think someone right. had mentioned. How, how can someone get that? Do you do you do you yeah, when you do a painting? When you do a painting like that one there, mm -hmm. that's the only one, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's the only one that. Yeah, there's no other painting like that. I mean, have you? <laughs> You know, I spoke in, I spoke to Usain Bolt's manager, and he said, you know something? If this is a big, you know, production, 
he will be getting like I will be receiving a call from his team. Yes. But if it's a one, if it's a one off, you know, here and there, you know, it might be okay. But in terms of my personal compositions of my own pieces. Yes. I also do, I also do what is called gicles, where these are prints on canvas that I hand embellish. Um, you cannot tell the difference between an original piece and a print on canvas. Yes. So I can, they, they can con contact me um, at mark.art.cameron at gmail.com. Yes, yes, yes. I, or they can look on my link on my, on my Facebook page. Um, it's called uh, Mark Cameron Fine Arts and Designs. Yes. If they send me a link there, I can always um, send them, you know, I could, we, we could have some dialogue from that, that medium. Yeah, Inter I do and, commissions and as well. I do commissions do? as well. Okay. Uh huh. So, so um, ladies and gentlemen, as what Mark said a while ago, um, we're going to post the the details here under the thread so people can actually have as much information for you. Have you got a like page? I know this is your is your. Have you got a like page as well? Like a page specifically? Yes, my yeah, the Mark Cameron Fine Arts and Designs page okay. is my, where I have most of my, right, it's right. Mark Cameron Fine Arts and Designs. Right. Okay. Well, definitely, Mark, we, we're going to make sure we put all of those information in there as well. And, uh, and I, I was asking if you had done a, a photo, a, a painting of um, the new Duchess and Duke of, of Sussex, you know, Duke and Duchess of Sussex. You know, <laughs> you, know you know, something, I, I, I plan to do that. Um, yeah. As I said, I you know I'm when I'm moved to do something, I, I tend to, you know that the, this is one situation this morning. I got up and I was like, I was not, I'm not in, into the Queen thing that much, right? The Queen and that kind of thing. But when yeah, I saw, yeah. he's a, a Republican. <laughs> when I saw the dynamics played out, and I saw this beautiful woman, and I saw her mother. I mean, literally brought tears to my eyes when I saw how far, you know. I, I thought what the mother might might have been thinking, you know, and it, it's it is somewhat. Um, you know, putting a stamp, so to speak, on the legitimacy of who we are as people and where we've come from. Yes, yes, we, we, yes. We've, we've, we've been there. We've been, we've been kings and queens before. Yes. And we've been, we've been demonized by, by, the, by forces who wanted to control us, you know. So when I saw her in her place that is in her rightful place. Rightful place. You know, although it's in... It's her, it's in her, she's in her rightful place where, where we as kings and queens who have always been there, you know, we've been marginalized by, de by demonic forces, you know, and it's a step in the right direction. And, and all, what I'm going to say before I leave is that we must take charge of our lives mm -hmm. or they will take charge of us. Okay. Yes. Um, in the absence of truth, democracy can never be realized. So we have to seek the truth for ourselves. Yes. Yes. To make the right decisions on who is going to take care of our country. So therefore, and I urge and I plead. I urge yes. and I plead all Jamaicans and Americans. Know your history and look into each candidate. Don't go for the guy that's the most, the best looking mm. or says what you want to hear. But if you don't take charge of your life, then you're going to sit back and you're going to experience what the Germans experienced in World War II when Adolf Hitler came to power and nobody stood up. Nobody stood up and they yes. paid a price for it. Wow. Wow. Those are, those are very so that strong. Is my, yeah, that is, that, very, is my, that is my two cents, Reverend. Yeah, those are very strong and powerful words. And I always, and I will sort of add to it by if you don't have an agenda, someone will have an agenda for you. You know, <laughs> because, because you know, some, Absolutely. you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes people say, uh, like in my, in my heyday, sometimes I said, oh, don't trust Sil Bernie, he's, he's got an agenda, man, he's got an agenda. And I said, and after a while, I said to myself, hang on a second. Yes, I do have an agenda. <laughs> because if you don't have an agenda, somebody will have an agenda for you. But can you please share the agenda? I would like to know what your agenda is as real as to me. 
Yes. If I if I if I meet someone and somebody starts telling me how wonderful I am, I'm, it's like okay, what is your agenda? Yes. I would like to yes. know so I can be a part of the conversation. Exactly. Exactly. I don't like the hidden. I don't like the hidden agendas. That that's 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 a bit that's a bit which is crucial. That's why I always say, don't go with the flow or it'll be in someone else's stream. Create your own rivers. And when you say create your own rivers, that's that's not hidden. That is just like you saying boat on the wave. It is there. It is exposed. The river is flowing. It's not a secret thing. It's gonna break a bank. It's gonna burst a bank. It's gonna um, pond the river upon the bank or whatever like that. You know what I mean? And blow things apart. And, and I believe, I believe very much, you know, Mark, that they, I'm getting into the motivational element now, you know, whereby the more you give and the more you're honest and the more your integrity and all those passion is there, why not have to worry about someone taking it? Because the more you give, the more you receive, because you're actually opening up yourself and giving out. So you get more receptive to getting more things in. I, I live by that. And um, let, let, let me say this. Yes. There is so much emphasis on materialism, you know. Um, people nowadays are, are, are more concerned about the house they have and the car they have. But guess yes. what? At the end of the day, nobody remembers the car that you drove or the house that you own. They mm. remember you based on your relevance to them. Yes. I'll give you a quick story because it's, it's, an, it's an important story. Many years ago, I call it antiques, okay? I went to this garage sale, or this estate sale, and there was a guy there who was a, a three-star general. Yes. I saw pictures with this guy and a lot of the former, um, former presidents, um, President Ford and so on. And when they opened up this guy's home, he died. He died. Mm. When they opened up his home for the sale, people were stepping over all his proclamations and his accolades bestowed on him. The pictures with him and, and, and Bush and the pictures yes. of him and Gerald Ford. People are stepping over those pictures to get to his furniture. Yes. They didn't care about, they didn't care about his accomplishments. Those are his accomplishments. Mm. People will remember you based on your relevance to them. Yes. So if you as a politician go in there and you have a fancy house, a nice car, and you did not put a policy in place that allowed persons to be educated or, or any other thing that can foster goodwill among people, they're not going to remember you. Your house yes. dies with you. And it doesn't mean anything. There is this level of materialism that I just don't get it. In Jamaica, people are... People are walking with phones and they can't even afford the credit. Exactly. They're buying all these expensive phones that are show that um, I have arrived. You haven't arrived because all you have is an expensive phone. You're still yeah. in your sorry uh, situation. Nothing has changed. So there, need, there needs to be this an education against away from the importance of materialism. I'm not against looking good. I mean, I mean, come on, guy. I mean, you gotta dress up once in a while. I mean, for yourself, you know. Yeah. But the level I'm talking about is where it is need to be validated by what you have. Yes. I still have a hundred and ten thousand dollar car. I drive a car that some people might throw away. <laughs> it doesn't mm. matter. My car gets me from point A to point B. I'm not interested, you know, I've gone to a point in my life where I'm not I'm not in, it doesn't matter. I yes. can drive a nice car if you, if, if you gave it to me. Or if I'm so rich that it's like buying a peanut butter, like a sandwich. Yeah, I'll buy oh, an expensive car. Yeah. It's not a big deal. But no, I'm not going to, it's, it's not, it doesn't make me who I am. I've yes. been there, done it. It doesn't, it doesn't make me who I am. So, right. when you have materialism, when you have materialism and greed and selfishness all lumped into one thing, that is a big problem. Yeah. And that is our problem in Jamaica. That, that's our problem in Jamaica today. Yeah. Mark, those are sound words, uh, very powerful words. And, uh, and I thank you so much for coming on. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, remember, Mark, I have this exhibition which is going on. We're going to put that details up under the thread and people can actually contact Mark and uh, 
get involved there. Those in Florida, Florida you are, isn't it? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, people can reach out to you. Um, um, uh, I think I think what you should do, Mark, one time is that we should do a little, um, I think next week, Saturday, you got your, your, your next exhibition, isn't it? Actually, um, it's been postponed. I'm actually going to New York. Well, okay. I'm doing some other business. <laughs> I got some other business to deal with, so yeah. Yeah. Let me, let but me anyway, but, yeah, um, but the point I mentioned there is that whenever you're gonna do, just let me know, and we just um, I just share your, you know, do, you do a live there or something like that, and if possible, we can just do a little, even a quick chat while you're there, going through the different um, pictures or whatever, like giving us a virtual tour, you know, at, okay. at some point, so so we can synchronize along that way, you know, because I believe very much in collaboration and I believe in supporting each other as much as possible. And you mentioned something about that people will want to actually move away from the mainstream, quote unquote mainstream, and go to the, the videos like myself. I know a couple of persons who message me and say they, they don't watch mainstream too much. They tune into Silver and Show because they know something will be relevant and they know that I'll touch on a couple of news topic which I think is relevant and I, I'm not going to put them down some pathway. I've got my political persuasion, but I try to still be balanced as much as possible. You know? Well what I like what I like about what you're doing is that I have I haven't heard your 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 views on anything. <laughs> on your, on your, which which is a good thing. One yeah. thing one you you are more interested in hearing what I have to say and yes. foster some and conversation about what we're trying to you know we're talking about. Which is yeah. which is a, a great mark of a person who's doing an interview, not mm -hmm. not to carry on your agenda, but to have a conversation about yes. what we're discussing. You you didn't give yes. me your views on anything, which 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 is admirable, which is so admirable. You don't, so you don't know my agenda then. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. But 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 that is that was not the context of our Any, interview. Anyhow, that's correct. Interview, I'm just winding you up there. Your yes, interview. Yes our interviews to hear my views yes. and to question what my views were, yes. which is exactly what you did. So that, that it's, is, left to the viewer, it's, it's left to the viewer to decide which way they would go. Lysia yeah. White, who knows me, because that is, hmm, Silburn? <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> but I, I won't I won't start up Lissy at this moment now, you know, as you get going in here. You know. But listen, Mark, thank you so much for coming on. And um, you know, uh, we, we went over my normal schedule, but I, I believe sometimes, you know, when when you when you touch on a nugget, you just keep going on and keep going on. And uh and that is awesome. So 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 thank you very much for coming on and uh we'll catch you on the other side. <laughs> Hey, I hope not the other side like manly and um <laughs> manly. <laughs> no, no. When I come to the States, when I come to the I've been invited to come to the States okay. so many times, you know, and I, and I keep saying okay. I, I need to do something. My cousins and different persons say you need to come over there, you know. So I, I need to do a visit over there uh, as very possible, you know. So Lysia White and all those guys can grill me. <laughs> you know, and, well, make, and you, make sure you call because I move around. I move, I move, I move quickly. I yes, move. yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So by the time you might be in New York next time, if <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Mark. Thank you very much. Yeah, and have a good one. Yeah, man. Thanks yeah. for having me on. Take care. All right. Peace out. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. All right. Okay. And never Glasses on. on. Ah, got you. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, that was Mark Renaissance Cameron, and uh, we just had a, a good conversation there. Um, I, I think it is, I think it is very good for these um, conversations to take place as much as possible. And uh, what, what I've, what I've, what I've decided to do is on Saturdays to to have these discussions with someone from overseas or so like that, you know. Um, Jamaica, U USA, wherever, as much as possible to, to sort of really delve into different issues. Uh, I think next week I might be having Magistry Raw. Um, she has some very uh, natural products, natural fruits, and we're going to look at healthy and natural eating, natural drinking as much as possible. 
just to bring forth um, these different um, things. Uh, on Thursday nights, what I want to do a lot is to have discussions on the, the knife crime issues or in, in the UK, talk about black organizations, because what has happened is that the news sometimes tend to just focus on these organizations when something happens or when there is a, a spate of knife crime or gun crime. And they'll give these different organizations just maybe uh, five minutes, but I want to give them an hour. And as Mark said, which I really appreciated, was that my job is to give a platform so other persons can talk. Uh, so far, I've had um, Paul Lawrence from 100 Black Men, and then I had Sandra Glenn last Thursday. Uh, I put the YouTubes out right after, and with Mark, I'll put out this YouTube unedited and just for persons to actually um, listen to it and watch it as much as possible. So, so that, that is what it's about. So I asked for Mark, you know, Mark is saying um, he's going to put up his details there under this thread so people can actually go on and actually support his business, support his painting uh, as much as possible. And I would appreciate that as well because I believe it's very important that we actually support each other in all that we do um, because that is really the mark of uh, people really pulling together, coming together, Nadine Thomas, you're on the spotlight as well. We'll be doing something, and Alicia at some point. I know you've got a testimony there. We'll talk about that as well, and as many things. So what i like for you to do as well is to make sure you um, share my video, um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is Silburn TV. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on um, Facebook as well, Silburn TV, and uh, tell people about it. As what Mark said as well, what I want to do is to be a voice on a, on apologetic, um, but most importantly, to sort of look at different news from a different perspective as well, not just following the mainstream because we can create the mainstream. I believe that we can create the mainstream because guess what, the news and the stream shall be, you know, exploded, you know, in a different way, as much as possible. So, without further ado. I hope you also watched that wonderful um, wedding today with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. They are now the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. I used to work in East Sussex once. And one of the things that I want to find out as well is how do they get to be Sussex, Cambridge, or whatever like that? Will Sussex now be owned by Prince Harry and, uh, and uh, Meghan Markle? Um, don't know if that's going to be, but... You know, I'm going to find out some more information about this and to educate ourselves that we learn together or somebody can actually do that research as well. And one more thing as well, if you know of any key persons, key guests that you think that I need to actually have a conversation with, let me know. If you know of any key topics as well that you want me to touch on as well, let me know as well. Just message me. Um, I put my email down there as well. And uh, yeah, so have a wonderful evening. And, and bless you and and keep cool. Peace out. On Instagram land, thank you so much. See you around as well. Peace out. And I uh, just want to give a shout out to uh, Marjorie Gusset. Uh, Mark, again, thank you. Alicia White, Nadine Thomas, Carleen McFadden, thank you for your contribution. Sharon Corinthian, um, Carly McFadden, Marjorie Gusset, thank you for that. Uh, Alicia White, you say come, yes, one day. <laughs> Carvel Bowell, um, Lana Newby. Uh, Aisha Sidio, my niece, Mimi of Miss Miles, Edward Murphy, Murray, um, Sharon Corinthian, uh, Sandra Campbell, Sandra Wilson, my cousin as well. Hey, Yannick, how are you? Amatosha Damiola, Janet Young. Uh, guys, okay, have a good night. Peace out.